SpaceX CEO Elon Musk repeatedly mentioned the vital role of the technical managers in a technical company. He said, I strongly believe that all managers in a technical area must be technically excellent, and SpaceX's success is proof of what he said. With a team of top-notch engineers, SpaceX has created amazing innovations, surpassing all titans and shaping the landscape of the U.S. space launch industry. Among that, can't help but mention the introduction of Raptor's third version, which is deemed to be the most advanced and powerful rocket engine ever built. However, the beauty of Raptor 3 lies not only in its power, but also in every design detail. Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. Elon Musk has made headlines recently with his growing support for Donald Trump's re-election, as well as his achievement in space technology, which is the unveiling of the Raptor 3 engine. It's safe to say that Raptor 3 is the case study for the successful application of the mottos. The best part is no part. Raptor 3's image, released in early August, knocked the fans' socks off with its minimal appearance and its incredible specifications. This version is said to be much lighter than previous versions, meaning the engine weight is significantly reduced by 105 kilograms compared to Raptor 2 and up to 555 kilograms compared to Raptor 1. This is because they deleted and integrated enough secondary structure, small fiddly bits, then they can locally protect, rest, and delete engine heat shields. Without the heat shield, secondary flow paths would be internalized, and regenerative cooling would be added to exposed components. Additionally, other features are removed, such as a whole bunch of bolt and weld joints. In terms of specification, Raptor 3 with 280 tons of force, improved thrust by 50 over Raptor 2 and 95 over Raptor 1. By comparison, the closest engine to the Raptor that uses a phased combustion cycle with methane and oxygen is the BE-4 engine, which is expected to produce about 245 tons of thrust. The special version 3 surpasses the popular rocket engines, such as RS-25, with 190 tons. The RD-180 has 390 tons of thrust at sea level, but uses two combustion chambers and two nozzles, reducing the thrust-to-weight ratio to 77.26, much lower than 183.6 of Raptor 3. For that reason, it is no exaggeration for Elon Musk to praise this design as a work of art, showing the refinement and sophistication hidden in the simple appearance. He speaks of SpaceX as having the most advanced 3D metal printing technology in the world. Due to rapid technological advancement, metal 3D printing has grown massively in recent years. Many innovative startups and suppliers have proposed new and increasingly affordable metal 3D printing processes and more and more compatible materials. So far, it was vague about exactly which process SpaceX uses for the Raptor engine. Laser powder bed fusion and DED are generally considered to be common processes used at SpaceX. However, Musk's statement leaves room for speculation as to whether the technologies used are in-house processes, a well-known provider of 3D printing solutions, or a combination of both. The Raptor test on August 8th also reminded us of the purity of methane propellant. The clear blue exhaust plume, characteristic of a methane-rich engine, also indicates an efficient fuel mixture combustion ratio while being able to generate more thrust from the same amount of fuel. This is a significant improvement over previous generations of Raptor engines, such as Raptor 1 or Raptor 2, whose exhaust still produce quite a bit of carbon, as evidenced by the exhaust having more red or yellow colors. Compared to SpaceX's current fuel, RP-1, methane is close to being an ideal best-of-both-worlds fuel and ticks a lot of boxes for SpaceX. It can be manufactured on Mars by the Sabatier process. Methane also helps their reusability aims, as RP-1 creates a lot of carbon when it burns, coking up engines and slowing their reuse, whereas methane has no such problem. Methane burns hotter and is lighter than kerosene, so it has a slightly higher specific impulse than kerosene. An engine with the same combustion pressure and efficiency will have a 10-second higher specific impulse when using methane instead of kerosene. Besides the beautiful blue of exhaust gas, we also notice the white part on the engine body. So what is it? In fact, it's not actually white as our eyes perceive it. Elon Musk explained right below the images, the parts that appear white are actually black, but covered in ice. This phenomenon is due to the extreme cold temperatures generated by the engine's cryogenic propellants, 
When the Raptor 3 engine fires, the liquid methane and liquid oxygen propellants, which are stored at very low temperatures, are injected into the combustion chamber. The rapid expansion and vaporization of these propellants create a plume of extremely cold gas that can condense moisture in the air, forming ice on the engine's surface. The appearance of Raptor 3 not only fires the public up, but also makes some people jealous. On the same day as the Raptor's test, ULA's CEO, Tori Bruno, posted on X that they have done an excellent job making the assembly simpler and more producible so there is no need to exaggerate this by showing a partially assembled engine without controllers, fluid management, or TVC systems, then comparing it to fully assembled engines that do. Elon Musk retweeted with the word LOL as a sarcastic response to his rival. Gwyn Shotwell, SpaceX's president, ironically responded to Bruno's skepticism by sharing a photo of the first test firing of the Raptor 3. Works pretty good for a partially assembled engine. SpaceX and United Launch Alliance, ULA, have been locked in a fierce rivalry over lucrative U.S. military and government launch contracts for years. For a while, ULA has been proud of being the defense contractor specializing in launching military satellites and was also Boeing's cash cow. The conflict has intensified as SpaceX has emerged as a disruptive force in the launch industry, challenging ULA's dominance with its reusable Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. Things started in 2014 when SpaceX sued the U.S. Air Force over its decision to award a multi-billion dollar contract for 36 rocket launches to ULA without competition. SpaceX argued it could deliver satellites to space more cheaply. At that time, ULA still used the Russian-made engines in its Atlas rocket, and its rockets were expendable versions, costing significantly more than Falcon. Musk also argued that ULA's use of the Russian-made RD-180 engines could violate U.S. sanctions. Within days of the suit being filed, U.S. Court of Federal Claims Judge Susan Gertrude Braden issued an injunction prohibiting ULA from buying the Russian engines. She ultimately lifted the injunction after several government agencies said the Russian manufacturer was not subject to the sanctions. But Russia later threatened to ban exports of the engines for use in military launches. They also threatened to end Russia's cooperation with the United States on the space station after 2020. SpaceX has then accused ULA of receiving a billion-dollar annual subsidy from the government to ensure launch readiness. ULA argues its average launch costs are around $225 million, lower than SpaceX's claims. Frankly, the rivalry has had significant implications for the space industry and U.S. space policy. The emergence of private companies like SpaceX has broken the monopoly of long-standing companies like ULA. This pushed ULA to innovate and drive down costs, benefiting the government and taxpayers. In 2014, ULA began developing the Vulcan rocket, largely to compete with SpaceX's Falcon 9 and to comply with a congressional requirement to stop using the Russian-made RD-180 engine that powers the Atlas V. Thanks to that, the Pentagon can maintain redundancy with two viable launch providers to ensure assured access to space. This is a problem that NASA is facing with the Boeing Starliner vehicle under NASA's commercial crew program. Starliner's incompetence over the years has put the national agency in an ironic situation, as they have to rely on the only vehicle SpaceX Dragon to ferry astronauts to the ISS. Worse still, the Boeing spacecraft is stranded in space, raising the alarm about the need for a rescue mission on Dragon. However, the conflict has also led to legal battles, political maneuvering, and international tensions. SpaceX has repeatedly challenged the U.S. Air Force's decisions to award contracts to ULA without competitive bidding. For example, in 2019, SpaceX submitted the 79-page redacted bid protest to challenge the U.S. Air Force's decision to award development contracts to its competitors and exclude SpaceX. The lawsuit emphasized that ULA's proposals were based on conceptual rockets. While SpaceX had proven vehicles ready for use, the rivalry has implications for U.S. defense policy, especially regarding reliance on foreign technology. ULA's use of Russian RD-180 engines in its Atlas rockets has been a point of contention, with SpaceX arguing that this reliance poses a risk to national security. This situation escalated when Russia threatened to halt engine exports to the U.S., further complicating the geopolitical landscape. The reliance on Russian-made engines by ULA has raised alarms about U.S. military capabilities. SpaceX has positioned itself as a solution to this dependency, advocating for a shift towards domestically produced technology for national security launches. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you.
and we look forward to seeing you next time.